Welcome to the Episcopal Church of the Good Shepherd. During Easter season, in this season of many baptisms, we might say, we are inviting our children, any children who so desire, that is, to go to Children's Chapel before the opening hymn, and then you'll be back for the baptism. We adjust it for the sake of time so you can get back for the baptism. So I'll invite Miss Patty to come forward and her helpers and any children in our midst who wish to go to Children's Chapel. There we go, we got them in the queue already. Come forward to me and we'll say a prayer and then send you all off. And, re- and then you'll come back for the baptism because I need your help. Can you help with the baptism? Yes. All right. So we'll offer a prayer before you go. Let us pray. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, you have blessed us with the joy and care of these, our children. Give us calm strength and patient wisdom as we bring them up, that we may teach them to love whatever is just and true and good, following the example of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And I ask God's blessing upon each one of you, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We'll see you all in just a little bit. And now, congregation, if you'll stand as you're able, we'll sing together hymn 324. service continues on page 299. Alleluia, Christ is risen. 
The Lord Lord is is risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope and God's call to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now the apostles and the believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them, step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, By no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time the voice answered from heaven, What God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times. Then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment, three men, sent to me from Caesarea, arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to go with them, and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen the angel standing in his house and saying, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, just as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he had given us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced. And they praised God, saying, Then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. The word of the Lord. Psalm 148 can be found on page 805 in the Book of Common Prayer. We will say it in unison. Alleluia! Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights. Praise Him, all you angels of His. Praise Him, all His host. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, heaven of heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. He made them stand fast forever and ever. He gave them a law which shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth. You sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and fog, tempestuous wind doing his will, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild beasts and all cattle, creeping things and winged birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the world, young men and maidens, old and young together, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name only is exalted. His splendor is over the earth and heaven. 
He has raised up strength for his people and praise for all his loyal servants, the children of Israel, a people who are near him. Hallelujah. A reading from the Revelation to John. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. At the Last Supper, when Judas had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. So won't you help to sing these songs of freedom? Cause all I ever have, redemption songs. Please be seated. Just as God finished the work of creation, book of Genesis, and Jesus finished the work of redemption, we know from the Gospel of John, So the Trinity will complete the entire plan of salvation by inviting the redeemed into a new creation. God makes us new through this new creation, through covenant. So much of the world operates via contractual obligations. A contract is a legalistic agreement. A covenant is a relationship that entails generosity, and continuation. There is a place for contract, but God has chosen covenant as a means of inviting us to accept being renewed. 
In our gospel passage today, Jesus said, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. The old commandment was that people treated one another more or less according to the law. That was based on contract, but Jesus came to fulfill the law of God in the form of love, covenant. But how can we participate? How can we do this covenant thing? It all seems overwhelming at times. It is even, it, is it even worth my time and effort? Will it mean anything in the grand scheme of things? Well, St. Francis of Assisi wrote, start by doing what's necessary, then do what's possible, and suddenly you are doing what's impossible. Watching last week's Kentucky Derby and watching the pre-race commentary showed how we can pick who we think will finish the race first based on our familiarity with the horses, the jockeys, the trainers, and the owners. We can make that pick based on statistical data and the odds. The race can even start and be two-thirds over with those horses who were predicted to win leading the way. But sometimes it's the spirited sleeper that surprises us. The jockey may know the odds, but evidently no one told Rich Strike the odds. God's odds can come from behind and surprise us, surprise everyone. Perhaps we can have a good amount of data and still not have the whole story. God's odds are always better than we expected to. They just may not always be visible to us in the beginning. Sometimes when God surprises us with grace, it seems to us to be some kind of grand exception. We can have our understandings, our structures, but God's vision and purposes are far greater. Grace is built into God's structure. God also has love languages that are all around us, and God's vocabulary, if you will, is real and relevant to our lives. Although my computer software doesn't think the word intinction, which you'll hear more about today, is an actual word, nor does it recognize lay minister, which is the ministry of most everyone in the church. One could say that the English language in general serves as an example of radical inclusion. And this is easy to prove. Let's just take the word prove. Prove is spelled in a similar way to grove, stove, cove, dove, love. Three different pronunciations and all are correct. Actually, I can love our English language with all of its historical quirks. It has come from many places other languages and cultures, it is far richer for the variety and how it works. In our Acts passage today, Peter thinks the old laws concerning what is clean and what is unclean bind him. What is according to Jewish custom and what is outside, what is other, what is Gentile? But God gives Peter this dream to reveal that what the old rule, how the old rule operated is no longer needed. God is saying that the Gentiles do belong. And perhaps we can call all of this new, good news. Radical inclusion is the nature of God. Redeeming grace is the nature of God and it's built into new creation. And we know from another part of scripture that when Peter denies Jesus, Jesus doesn't reject the whole person of Peter. Jesus showed what acceptance and love looks like. Jesus' new commandment to love one another is a paradigm shift, though, but it serves as a new blueprint from which to build heaven on earth. Jesus' new commandment can be Robert Weston Kissel's baptism today where he will be sealed by the Holy Spirit as Christ's son forever. And Jesus' new commandment can be the renewing of our vows today and then what we do with it once we leave this place. 
My teenage daughter, she likes reading books and watching movies about the metaverse. She can talk about superheroes, especially the Marvel ones, and the different versions of them living at the same time in other universes. I'm fascinated that she is fascinated by all of this. And I wonder sometimes, will the metaverse become a reality to the next generations? Is it already operating? The truth is, I don't really know. But I do know that God operates in ways beyond our understanding. In the book of Revelation, there's this different imagery about radical inclusion, ultimate radical inclusion. And the whole message of Revelation points towards hope, which is the ultimate. For instance, the coexistence of the lion and the lamb early on, the chaos of the sea and all of its dangerous beasts, and then the bride and the groom. The first 20 chapters of Revelation are full of destruction and doom. The church was truly oppressed, and all of these chapters reflect that. To be identified as a Christian and as a member of the church would often mean a death sentence. But chapter 21 begins to describe how God's hope and salvation get the last word. Hope is presently unfolding. And this is not a theology that says hope is unreachable or separated in some distant precious moment metaverse of heaven. This Christian hope is God coming to earth in Jesus as the groom God and the bride, the church. And the two will be joined as heaven and earth are joined. God among us. God's home is here among us. As we hear in John, the flesh came to live among us in Jesus. In Revelation, God says, I am making all things new. The I am making part of that is the future reality unfolding now. God is making the future now. It is coming, it will come, it has come. All of those are true at the same time, or as we say, on earth as it is in heaven. Redemption is the promise of the prophets and the grace that is Christ. This is the new Jerusalem, the church. Coming to earth, God is leading us into a new way of being, the body of Christ. In Bob Briner's book, Roaring Lambs, he says, who speaks for Christians today? And he goes on to say, the answer is simple, you do. Not your pastor or a famous Christian author or even one of those well-known personalities on Christian radio, television, or social media, you do. Much of the world follows the way of the lion, but the new creation of God brings together the lion and the lamb, and our job is to be gentle lions and roaring lambs. To roar is to be vocal, sharing the good news. Jesus said, by this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is why we come to worship to give praise, to regenerate, and to find strength to serve once we are dismissed. It's also to find our bearings and to sail through hard times, not drowning in the chaos of the sea and all of its beasts. Last week, I found Bishop Mark's words very helpful when he said, it is one thing to be going to church and it's another to being the church in the world. It is in the church and in our relationship with God that we find this new reality, this new creation possible. We learn, we listen, and we all try to follow Jesus. And that is a lifetime pursuit. And we try to be that roaring lamb, to follow in the image of the ultimate roaring lamb, Christ. Well, the world already has a lion's share of noise, fear, and doubt. 
It is and will be the exception for you and I to be roaring lambs in a world craving the freedom found in God's radical inclusion of redeeming grace. Bob Marley's nickname was Lion of Judah, and he wrote these words. So won't you help to sing these songs of freedom? Because all I ever have, redemption songs, redemption songs, redemption songs. Amen. The candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. children of any age who wish to come forward and sit with Miss Patty and all the rest, Mr. Allen, there you go, are welcome to come forward. Great. You guys want to sit? You can sit right here. Front row seats. You might get wet. Anyone else who wants to come forward and sit on the floor may join this crew. There we go. Good, good, good. Perfect. All right. We got everybody we need. We got the talent. All right. So parents and godparents, you've got your prayer books. We are on the bottom of page 301. Page 301. And y'all are going to present together. Three, two, one. Excellent. Top of the next page. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Do you renounce the evil powers of this world? which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? Congregation, we're now on the bottom of page 303. These parents and godparents have let us all know what their intentions are. We'd love to have your help in this endeavor to raise Robert Weston in the way of love. Will you please stand as you're able? I have a question for you. Love to hear your response loud and clear. Congregation, will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support this little one in his life in Christ? We will. They are on your side. <laughs> Let us then join with him who is committing himself to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third 
third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God and Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. We strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being. I will, with God's help. Let us now pray for Robert Weston, who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver him, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open his heart to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill him with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep him in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach him to love others in the power of the Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send him into the world and witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring him to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. Jen, if you'll step right here. Just hold that. Perfect. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We thank you, almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin and everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it we are buried with Christ in his death. By it we share in his resurrection. Through it we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. All right. Hey, how about a change of scenery? Hey, Weston. <laughs> hey, buddy. Hey, what do you think? Huh? <laughs> yeah? get you a little bit wet. What do you think about that? All right. Yeah, big boy. All right. Robert Weston, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 You are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism, and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon this your servant the forgiveness of sin and have raised him to the new life of grace. Sustain him, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give him an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. 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 Congregation, the bottom of page 308, let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the household of God, confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in his eternal priesthood. And now the peace of the Lord be always with you. 
and also with you. You may greet one another. You did great. He's taking it all in, isn't he? He's just taking it all in. He was perfect. Yeah. No, he did do perfectly. Oh my goodness. You want to touch that? That water? There's something in there. You want to go see your mama? Oh my goodness. He was perfect. Thank you all. Oh, bless you. Oh, congratulations. What more do you need than that? I can think of one more thing. This is graduation Sunday. So are there any graduates in the room? Anyone who is, gra oh, we've got at least one, we've got two. Graduates, stand where you are. We've got two? So two people three. in this room. Oh, I got one up there. So three people in this room are grad. Oh, I got one right here. So I got four graduates in this room. Is that it? All right, with just four of you, come on forward. Come forward, graduates, please. All right. So somehow we have made it. There's Ruby. Can you stand with these big boys, Ruby? There you go. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. So somehow we've made it to the end of the school year, just about, and you all are all our graduates. There are other graduates in our congregation. Some may be watching us online. Some are, some are at home doing other things. I want to ask a, a follow-up question to are there any graduates? Are there any teachers in the room? Anyone who's taught Sunday school this year, who's done children's chapel this year, anyone who's a public school teacher, who's a private school teacher, a university teacher, are there any teachers in the room? Teachers in the room, will you please stand? A lot of y'all are getting pointed out, I like that. So teachers, teachers in the room, will you please stand? So keep, stay standing, stay standing. So these are, these are teachers who are teaching at any level, any level, from zero to uh, 115, teachers at any level. So if, if, if I've left you out, teachers, stand up. Okay, we got the teachers up. All right, I got my teachers up. I've got our graduates up. What a gift all of it is, huh? To the teachers, thank you, thank you, thank you. We would be nothing without you. This is true? To the graduates, thank you, thank you, thank you. You help make the world a better place by committing yourselves to your studies and then allowing your teachers to launch you off to the next thing. Isn't this beautiful? So I have a prayer on this graduation Sunday. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, look with favor upon these graduates and upon these teachers. Assist them all with your grace, that they may go forth from their studies to spread the love of your Son, each in his or her own special way, and give them courage and patience and vision, and strengthen us all in our Christian vocation of witness to the world of the love of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. It is in his name that we offer our thanks and our prayers at teachers and graduates. Finally, I ask God's blessing upon each one of you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So you may be seated, and I'll turn it over to our acolyte master, Jim Willard, and he may need, you need Mr. Fleck, Jim? Who do you and need? And Mr. You need Steve. both of them? Yes. So we recognize graduates from anything, right? And we also, at the end of the year, recognize our senior, as it were, acolytes, and our acolyte master, Mr. Jim Willard, will take it from here. Hi. Um, 
It is with great pleasure that I have an opportunity after these two years of COVID to actually recognize three of our strong, outstanding senior acolytes who are graduating. These young men have provided uh, a leadership in a time of real difficulty uh, when we were constrained as to what we could do in our parish uh, with regard to our liturgy. Uh, they've combined something in excess of 22 years of service to Good Shepherd, and Wiles Johnson uh, was actually an uh, acolyte, I think at St. Hubert's, was it, uh, for several years before he came here. So uh, I want to recognize Mason Deep, whose intentions are to attend the University of Kentucky, majoring in biology, and he's planning on pursuing a career in physical therapy. Tristan Fleck, attending the Miami University of Ohio, accepted into the Farmers Business School and was hmm. majoring in business administration. And Wiles Johnson, met Western Kentucky University, majoring in engineering and agriculture, and previously um, he has been one of the instrumental people at our 11 o'clock service along with Mason. Tristan used to serve at our nine o'clock service predominantly. And with that, I'm going to present each of them with a sterling silver cross and uh, wish them well in their future endeavors. Thank you so much, and now you may be seated. So if you're interested in following in the footsteps of these young men and becoming an acolyte, please don't hesitate to speak with our acolyte master, Jim Willard, or otherwise reach out to us in the church office. And a thousand thanks again to you, Jim, for your many years of service and your continuing service as our acolyte master. Much, much appreciated. Two other things to draw your attention to and then the birthday prayer. One, it's that time of year where a featured outreach project emerges here at the beginning of the summer, and that project is Habitat for Humanity. So we are partnering with others in the Lexington community, and we're going to build another house this summer. We've identified, or the Habitat folks have identified a family in need, and we are answering that need with our sweat equity, as it were. You can go to our website, follow the uh, outreach button and the Habitat for Humanity sort of electronic breadcrumbs and you'll find a sign-up sheet. You'll see all the days during the summer that we're going to be building and then you'll find a little blank. You put in your name for the hours and the days that you can work and we'll all band together and build a house this summer. How cool is that? The other thing that I want to draw your attention to is that we're going to do something we haven't done in two years during communion today. We are going to pass the chalice of wine. So wine returns today. Now, if you're like me, and it's been two years, you may have forgotten exactly how we do this. So what's going to happen is when we get to the communion, uh, the distribution of communion, as it were, we'll come up double file, right? So this side is, is one line, and this side is the other line. When you get up to the altar, this is communion 101, by the way. When you get up to the altar, if you're on this side, the side of the baptismal party, when you get to the center of the rail, you'll go all the way to the right. Does that make sense? And you'll start, stand or kneel on that side all the way to the right. If you're on this side, when you get up there, Diane will lead the way, you're going to start at the center and you're going to fill in to the left. Make sense? So on this side, you start at the right, fill into the center. This side, start at the center, fill into the left. I'll then distribute the bread to the whole rail. You with me? Then someone's going to follow me with the chalice of wine. And you are welcome to either sip from the chalice of wine, common cup, or John used this in the sermon. First time I ever heard that word in a sermon, you can intinct, intinction. What that means is just barely dip the bread in the wine, right? Trick with intinction is trying not to get your fingers in the wine. There, there, there's a real discipline here to this practice. Now, here's the deal. You may think, yeah, not ready for wine. Not ready for wine today. 
perfectly fine. When you come forward, you take the bread from me. Does that make sense? And then you cross your hands across your chest like this. It's a Christian sign language for no thank you. And the chalice bearer will pass you by. You may also, after you take the bread and consume it, just get up and leave. That's also a pretty good sign to the chalice bearer <laughs> that you're not going to take the wine. Does that make sense? Here's what I really want to drive home to you. You are not allowed to have one single millisecond of self-consciousness about not taking the wine. We believe in the Episcopal tradition that the full efficacy of the sacrament travels in one or the other. So you're getting all you need just in the bread. Does that, does that make sense? So if you don't want to take the wine, don't take the wine. If you do want to take the wine, just be careful with it. My chalice bearers have one job. That job is to not drop the chalice. Seriously, you are in charge of taking it to your mouth. You may remember doing this before. It's really hard to pour wine into somebody's mouth. <laughs> You're in charge of taking it to your mouth. Does that make sense? Okay. You're also in charge of not getting your fingers in the wine. Does that make sense? I have not trained them to police the sort of dipping of fingers in the wine. That's on you. Are we together? All right. Here's a last little piece about the wine. I'll be at the rail. Father John will have his usual station here distributing bread. He's going to have two chalice bearers with him. One is for sipping. One is for dipping. Excuse the rhyme. I'm sorry. It's not great. You know, so they can, they can help you through that. It's been two years. I got a lot of confidence in us. I think we're going to be just fine. You know, if you have any doubts, pass it by. It's all good. As we come forward... Try to keep a little distance, you know, kind of respectful social distance. Just, yeah, everybody try to be respectful. All good. That's wine. I've missed something that I'm sure we'll fix it next Sunday. It is our tradition in this place to offer prayers of blessing and thanksgiving upon anyone who is celebrating a birthday or an anniversary this week. And I think it is your birthday today. So, Ruby, come back up. Now, are you bringing an escort, or is it her birthday, too? Escort. I like it. Now, Ruby, they tell me that today is actually your birthday. Is that true? And they told me that you're four years old? Oh, my gosh, you're five. Five years old. Now, how old are you guys? Oh, y'all are escorting him. No, I... How, say it. Oh, it, we're asking both of you. Yeah. I'm six. You're six? Awesome. Excellent. I love it. And Miss Sarah, I think your birthday is t tomorrow. Nice. So is everybody else birthdays? You, oh, your birthday too. too. Awesome. Yours is just Friday. And you're an escort or you have a birthday too? Last Monday. We got awesome. Great. Catch up day. I love it. I love it. So congregation, you have the birthday prayer in your prayer book there. We will pray it together saying, Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. May they increase in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and neighbors. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Good and gracious God, here are your sons and your beloved daughters gathered in this, your church, celebrating the anniversaries of their births. May the love that has carried them this far in life fill them to overflowing on this day and carry them all the rest of the way on the very wings of your grace. And I ask God's blessing upon each one of you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy birthday. Excellent. I think we got it. We got birthdays, we got graduations, we got wine. We got Weston baptized. I think we're good. The Eucharistic feast. You need to know this. Everybody in this room is welcome at this table. It is your table. Come to your table. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts with praise.
service continues on page 361. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself, in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Now after supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died and rose for you. Feed on him on your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Post-communion prayer is on page 365. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Thank you.
Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.